Hi, I'm Jen, and welcome to Christian Fire Poppy. Today is March 8th, 3 8 in the AM, and I am very excited to share some information with you guys because 3 11, March 11th, which is in three days, is going to be a very interesting day. It looks to me like it's going to be a day of covenant blessings or cursings, or both. So 311, this is the day. Let me show you why my thoughts are here right now. So on 311, there's a Ramadan deadline, or Israel is going to invade Gaza. So we have Israel setting a Ramadan deadline for feared Rafah invasion, Israeli officials appear to have set a deadline to invade the southern Gaza city, the largest refugee camp in the coastal territory. Israel and Hamas, through mediators, are trying to reach a deal that would pause fighting and release Hamas-held hostages for Israeli-held Palestinian prisoners by the start of the Muslim holy month of Ramadan. We'll know in a couple of days what is going to happen, President Biden told reporters. There's got to be a ceasefire. It's going to be very dangerous. We are trying very, very hard to get a ceasefire. Here's what to know about Ramadan, the holiest period in the Islamic calendar and the informal deadline for a Gaza ceasefire deal. So this video is not going to be just about this aspect. There are a lot of interesting, many, many interesting things that are colliding on 311 in this next week. So Ramadan, a flashpoint for Israel and Iran. So there's also a clash happening between Hezbollah on the Lebanon border. So in Reuters, it says that Israeli Defense Minister Yov Gallant said on Tuesday the continuing tension with Iran-backed Hezbollah at the border with Lebanon was moving the situation nearer to a military escalation. Israel and Hezbollah have been trading fire since the group Hamas attacked Israel on October 7th fueling concern about the danger of all-out war between the heavily armed adversaries. So we have the Iran, uh, Iran-backed Iran Hezbollah versus Israel. It says, we are committed to the diplomatic process. However, Hezbollah's aggression is bringing us closer to a critical point in the decision-making regarding our military activities in Lebanon. So I find it interesting that they're either going to come to a peace treaty, which would be a blessing. So if we're talking about blessings versus cursings, there will either be a blessing of peace or a cursing of fighting. And many people, when we hear Biden warning that it could be very, very dangerous, it just makes you wonder about what they're warning about. So Ramadan is 311. And right here it says that the holy month of Ramadan is the ninth month in the Islamic lunar calendar. So it is a month of fasting, worship, service, communal gathering, and spiritual development. Fasting in Ramadan is one of the five pillars of Islam. I find it kind of interesting that Ramadan starts at this time and it ends the day after the great American eclipse. So you'll have the world of Islam, fasting and praying, focusing on their holy days all the way up through the great American eclipse. So right here, it says that Ramadan 2024, the Muslim holy month of Ramadan will begin on Monday, March 11th or Tuesday, March 12th, depending on the sighting of the moon. So anywhere, actually, I've read between March 10th and 12th, depending on when that new moon shows up. So Ramadan, this is a holiday that marks the end of fasting and is expected around April 9th. So Ramadan ends on April 9th. Not only are there big things happening with Israel, but there are things happening in America on 311. And I like to listen to some economic channels, and there are a lot of warnings coming from the big players. The people who are in the know are putting out big warnings, and it looks to me, and they're explaining how it is going to stem from the decision that starts on 311. So on March 11th, 
we have the bank lending program expires. There was emergency spending grants and allowances that were made during 2020 and last year when there were banking problems, but those programs are going to expire on 3.11. So Warren Buffett says a storm is brewing in the banking industry and that people won't make it to 2025. So some headlines in the news, it says Fed to allow emergency bank lending program to expire. So it's expiring. And I found it kind of interesting that in 2023 on 3.11, Biden and Newsom got together to discuss the second largest bank failure in history, which would have which had happened the day before on March 10th. So here we are a year later and that safety net is being removed. And guess what? The corporate giants are selling. So what do they know that we don't? Well, they're being pretty obvious about it and they're warning us. So Warren Buffett is selling 28.7 billion in stocks. Bezos wraps up 50 million Amazon stock sell, netting 8.5 billion. So we have Bezos, Jamie Dimon, Mark Zuckerberg have sold stock worth about 9 billion. They might think markets can't go much higher. So 311 is shaping up and we have a lot of information pointing to it as being an important day. So 311, if you look at it in history, it's actually the day that COVID began and it's the day that the Spanish flu began. So both of those were pretty big curses upon the world. You can see right here, headlines, the WHO declares COVID-19 a pandemic on March 11th, 2020. And in 1918, the first confirmed case of Spanish flu is reported in the United States, marking the beginning of a global pandemic. Hmm, both of them on March 11th. Very, very interesting. So I decided to dive in a little bit more and find out about the numbers 3 and 11. 3 to me, I always remember, is God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. That is what the symbolism means to me and to many others. And I found this video. This is on this uh, YouTube channel, Supernatural by Design. He's not a member of the church, but he talks about biblical meanings of numbers. And I just sift through it with my gospel lens. I keep those things that I know and I add onto it with my covenant and priesthood knowledge. So I added a few things. This was his picture and his video, and he did a great job on this, but I added some restoration covenant truths onto this, including cutting covenants. So I've enjoyed studying about covenants, history of covenants, and in the Bible, the original Hebrew word, when you talk about covenants, it's specifically cutting a covenant. And the origin of making covenants was with Abraham, and you would literally cut an animal in half and then pass through it. And this was representing if you were obedient to the covenants, blessings would come your way. If you were not obedient, then cursing. So I copied and pasted this little bit of information from byu.edu. And it says, why does biblical Hebrew regularly speak of cutting covenants? Certainly this idiomatic wording is used metaphorically in some cases, but more importantly, it seems to reflect ancient covenant making practices. In our day, a contract often becomes legally binding when the parties sign a document detailing the terms of the agreement. In a similar way, ancient covenants often became binding by killing and cutting an animal. This may sound foreign to us in modern society, but the phrases cut a deal and strike a bargain appear to have come into English from the wording of ancient covenant-making practices involving animal slaughter. So this is the history of covenants. It's interesting because if you think the word 11 to, he links it to promises, I would say even more succinctly covenants. And the image of 11 is if you have a hole and you cut it in half to have two equal sides, you get 11. You have blessings and cursings. Blessings on the right hand, cursings on the left hand. So 311, the number three. God, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the number 11, cutting covenants. So we're going to look at March 11th through the lens of blessings and cursings and covenants. So it's kind of interesting because in Doctrine and Covenants 84, we're told that 
there is condemnation over all of Zion. But there's also a hint there. It says that we will be forgiven with a commandment to bear testimony to all the world and to not take the Book of Mormon lightly. So let's review this. In previous videos, my previous video, This is the Generation, I talked about the importance of not treating lightly the Book of Mormon, but there's actually an interesting note here that I added that I think you'll enjoy. So the Father teacheth him of the covenant which he has renewed and confirmed upon you. So we're talking about covenants. Confirmed upon you for your sakes, and not for your sakes only, but for the sake of the whole world. So God is instructing us that these covenants we make are not just for ourselves. We're given these privileges so that we can share it with the whole world because the whole world lieth in sin and groaneth under darkness and under the bondage of sin. And he says, even your minds in times past have been darkened because of unbelief. We're in this dark world and we get caught up in that. And because you have treated lightly the things you have received, which vanity and unbelief have brought the whole church under condemnation. And we have never been told that this has been lifted specifically. And this condemnation resteth upon all the children of Zion, even all. And we have yet to completely gather Israel. It's a work that we're told is so important right now. And they shall remain under this condemnation until they repent and remember the new covenant, even the Book of Mormon, and the former commandments, which I have given them not only to say, but to do according to that which I have written. Now, this part is so important. I wish I had included it. I kind of overlooked it in my last video. It says, for I will forgive you of your sins with this commandment, that you remain steadfast in your minds in solemnity and the spirit of prayer in bearing testimony to all the world of those things which are communicated unto you. Therefore go ye into all the world and unto whatsoever place ye cannot go, ye shall send that the testimony may go from you into all the world unto every creature. Now, this scripture was actually one of the biggest motivations for me to start a YouTube channel. Starting a channel was probably the last thing in the world that I wanted to do. But when I read this and I felt the spirit prompting me, I just felt like I had to do this. I wanted to come out from under this condemnation and not just starting a channel, but I've taken a lot of actions within the last year motivated by this, wanting to come out from this condemnation through my own choices. So curses 311. Let's look at what else has happened in history on March 11th. Well, when I think of 311, it's very closely tied to 911. Three times three is nine, and both of them are tied to covenant blessings and cursing. So on 311 in history, we have Madrid's basically a 9-11 type event for them. And we had a Japan magnitude 9.0 earthquake that came with a tsunami and a nuclear accident. So the Madrid thing on March 11th in 2004, there were 10 explosive devices that were detonated on four commuter trains in Madrid, killing 191 and wounding more than 1,800 people. Look, there's that 911. And then also on March 11th, 2011, so again, these 11s and 9s and 3s keep popping up, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and a resulting tsunami struck Japan's northeastern coast, killing nearly 20,000 people. And then because of all of the damage and the tsunami, it instigated a major nuclear accident. So that was, that was not good. Those were not blessings. On 311 in history, let's take a look at some other things. So in I just Googled what 311 in history and it listed some of these things. 537, the Goths began their siege on Rome. 1302, the characters Romeo and Juliet were married this day, according to William Shakespeare. So we have kind of a marriage covenant, but it, it was not a covenant marriage, so it did not end well. 1888, the blizzard of 88 began along the U.S. Atlantic seaboard, shutting down communication and transportation lines. More than 400 people died. In 1993, North Korea withdrew from the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, refusing to open sites for inspection. And this one is the biggest one of all. In 1986, Popsicle announced its plan to end the traditional twin stick frozen treat 
for a one stick model. <laughs> this made me laugh so much <laughs> when I was looking up <laughs> and done. 311 and this is actually on the list so it was so funny I had AI create this this was like the 911 for the popsicle world instead of two twin towers and two sticks we got the one stick model devastating <laughs> so I, I don't take all the connections that I make seriously because let me tell you why I enjoy even the erroneous connection so when I went to BYU, I found that I could do really well in some of the classes that required a lot of memorization. So I took physiology and anatomy where you work with the cadavers and you had to memorize, it felt like billions of terms having to do with the body. And I actually was at the top of my class and I did really well because what I figured out with time is that if you take important concepts. So concepts that you know are important that you want to remember and retain and you connect them to something else, an image, maybe something funny, maybe just an interesting connection. It helps your brain to remember it. And so it creates more meaning and memory and you're able to pull from that more later on in later on when you when you see those things. So anyways, that was hilarious. So 311 2024 is also the Torah calendar one, one, one day. It's the spiritual new year and the new moon day. So they will be looking for a new moon at this time. And on March 11th, it's one of our bet. So that's Rosh Kodesh, which is the new year. So Torah is just another way of looking at the calendar. And then on top of that, another reason it's a one, one day is that um, March was actually the first month of the ancient Roman year until possibly as late as 153 BC. And the Gregorian calendar skipped 10 days in October of 1582 in order to make up for the extra days which had been accrued under you know, the Julian calendar. So basically, March used to be the first day of the month. And if you go back 10 days, it puts the 11th on actually the first day. So another interesting look at the one, one, one day concept. And I had done a video previous to this on just our regular calendar, January 11th. We talked about one, one, one day and some interesting connections. So I love this one, Acts 1, 11. It says, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner, as ye have seen him go into heaven. And in the first book of Nephi 1, it says, I, Nephi, having been born of goodly parents, therefore I was taught somewhat in all the learning of my father, and having seen many afflictions in the course of my days, nevertheless having been highly favored of the Lord in all my days, yea, having had a great knowledge of the goodness and the mysteries of God, therefore I make a record of my proceedings in my days. This is another reason I like to learn about numbers and the Hebrew ancient symbolism is Nephi. He connects the goodness and mysteries of God with having been taught in the learning of his fathers in the Hebrew ways. And the best 311 connection of all. This one is awesome. So this day, 311, Elder Rasban gave what for me was really foundational life-changing talk. It was called This Day, and he talks about 3rd Nephi 11. We have been hearing about 3rd Nephi 11 from the prophet a lot, and he tells us to share 3rd Nephi 11 with a friend. This is what he says. Elder Rasband says, My dear brothers and sisters, in the Book of Mormon, the phrase this day is used repeatedly to call attention to counsel, promises, and teachings. King Benjamin, in his final address, admonished the people, Hear my words, which I shall speak unto you this day. Open your ears that you may hear, and your hearts that you may understand, and your minds that the mysteries of God may be unfolded to your view. So, 3511, let's, he's talking about this day. So he's going to go on to talk about 311 in just a minute, but 
Think about what he's saying. He's saying, this day promises to open your ears that you may hear and the mysteries of God being unfolded. And I find it interesting that President Nelson, right now, currently, if you look, he has given 111 talks. So this day, 311, share 3 Nephi 11 with a friend. So he continues on, Elder Rasband, in this day to say, this day, one of the greatest missionaries of the Book of Mormon is President Russell M. Nelson. When he was a newly called apostle, he gave a lecture in Accra, Ghana. In attendance were dignitaries, including an African tribal king, with whom he spoke through an interpreter. The king was a serious student of the Bible and loved the Lord. Following President Nelson's remarks, he was approached by that king who asked in perfect English, Just who are you? President Nelson explained that he was an ordained apostle of Jesus Christ. The king's next question was, What can you teach me about Jesus Christ? President Nelson reached for the Book of Mormon and opened it to 3 Nephi 11. So, in very, very recent times, in just the last couple of years, we have received three admonitions. And to be honest, some of these admonitions have been even more frequent going back for many years. President Nelson talks about this all the time. President Nelson has asked us, one, to watch the 3 Nephi 11 Book of Mormon video. So 3 Nephi 11, it begins with this. It says, and again, the third time they did hear the voice and did open their ears to hear it, and their eyes were towards the sound thereof, and they did look steadfastly towards heaven from whence the sound came. And this was right before the Savior came and appeared to them. And so we have our prophet emphasizing this and talking about hearing these words in third Nephi 11. So he told us to watch that video about third Nephi 11, and then two, to study this part of the Book of Mormon, and three, to share this part of the Book of Mormon with our friends. So you can see down here that he says, may I show you a brief excerpt from the scene depicting the Savior's appearance to the Nephites? It is significant that the Savior chose to appear to the people at the temple. It is his house. It is filled with his power. And the second time, in April 2023, there was a prophetic emphasis, and this is linked to his invitations for Easter and Holy Week. So this is the right time to remember this, to focus on this, to do this. He invited his listeners to also study the account of the Savior's appearance to the Nephites in the Americas, as recorded in 3 Nephi. And this is the day. So President Nelson models sharing 3 Nephi 11 to the African tribal king and many others. So President Nelson has actually talked about this many times, that he doesn't give people a Book of Mormon and say, read it from cover to cover. He tells them specifically to start at 3 Nephi 11. That is the center point, the whole purpose, the most important part of the Book of Mormon. So in an article, it said, speaking to 5,825 missionaries from 35 missions on Friday morning, President Nelson added, once a person has committed to reading the sacred book of scripture, suggest they don't start at the beginning. Instead, open to 3 Nephi 11, where they can read Jesus Christ's important words spoken to the Nephites, words that promote baptism, prayer, etc. So, I found it interesting because as I was thinking about connections between 311, I wanted to look at 1 Nephi 311. And this scripture says, and we cast lots. Who of us should go in unto the house of Laban? So the Book of Mormon was so important that they risked their lives to go get it. Well, I shouldn't say the Book of Mormon, the scriptures. Um, to go into the house of Laban. And it came to pass that the lot fell upon Laman, and Laman went in unto the house of Laban, and he talked with him as he sat in his house. So this is how important the Bible and the scriptures and words of the prophets are. And so they cast lots. And so this was kind of interesting because Purim, in my other videos, we've been talking about how this is an Esther season, such a day, we have been born for such a day as this. And Casting lots is actually tied to this idea of blessings or cursings in the ancient world. So Purim, this is the holiday of Esther. This is the day that 
we're going to be opening the Kirtland Temple as far as having the church owning it and, and opening it. And the festival is called Purim because of the lots cast by Haman. So there are actually a lot of instances where the Bible talks about casting lots. These are just a couple of them. It would be an interesting overall study. But in the first book of Samuel 1442, lots are used to determine that it was Jonathan, Saul's son, who broke the oath that Saul made. Cursed be the man that eateth any food until evening, that I may be avenged on my enemies. And also in the book of Leviticus, God commanded Moses in chapter 16, 8, and Aaron shall cast lots upon the two goats, one lot for the Lord and the other lot for the scapegoat. So here you have this covenant imagery, the temple sacrifice and Aaron casting lots to see if you are on the right hand blessed or the left hand cursed. So what is casting lots in the book of Esther? So Kashaf seems to mean mutter, although the Septuagint renders the same phrase as Pharmakaya, meaning poison, so it may refer to magic potions or poisons. In the book of Esther, Haman casts lots to decide the date on which to exterminate the Jews of Shushan. I kind of found this connection interesting. That's pharmakai poison. That we also have the start of two pandemics on three eleven. All right, so this idea of casting lots, it is also linked to Jonah. So casting lots fell on Jonah for not sharing the gospel message of repentance with Nineveh. In the book of Jonah 1.7, it says the desperate sailors cast lots to see whose God was responsible for creating the storm. Then the sailors said to each other, come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. They cast lots and the lot fell on Jonah. He was trying to run away from his covenant admonition and from the promptings and the message from the Lord to go and preach the gospel. And it's kind of, I don't know, I find some similarities that, that we have a lot of people in the Christian world are talking about this eclipse coming up on April 8th being a Nineveh eclipse because you have all these Ninevehs in the pathway. So not all of them are exactly in to totality, but you have Jonah here that definitely is all these Ninevehs, and it's not like there are tons of Ninevehs over here. They just seem to be in this area. But to me, the most provocative aspect of this Nineveh eclipse theme is the idea that a lot of scholars have pointed to the fact that the sign of Jonah was probably an eclipse. So the fact that in Matthew 12, 33, it says that then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. But he answered and said, There shall be no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And then you have here, so the prophet Jonah lived and prophesied in Jeroboam's reign. The biblical scholar, Donald Wiseman, and others have speculated that the eclipse took place around when Jonah arrived in Nineveh and urged the people to repent, otherwise the city would be destroyed. This would explain the dramatic repentance of the people of Nineveh as described in the book of Jonah. Ancient cultures, including Assyria, viewed eclipses as omens of imminent destruction, and the empire was in chaos at this time, struggling with revolts, famines, and two separate outbreaks of plagues. So I see similarities to our day, our day that we have <clears throat> some struggles. Our nation is kind of in chaos. And we are struggling with a lot of things. We just had an outbreak of a plague. And we also have the Doctrine and Covenants that's telling us. So we also have a lot of church sites that are in this path of totality. And we have the Doctrine and Covenants that tells us that we are under condemnation. because, And then we have the prescription for it, which is to share the gospel with all the world. So something to think about. So as I was thinking about all of these topics and I started to make this, I thought it was so crazy odd that I went to AI to generate a picture for the cover of this. And one of the, all I typed in was the, I said, realistic image of a red calendar with the March 11th, this is the day written on it. And this is what it comes up with. So when AI creates an image, it's 100% unique. And this one right here that I chose 
thought it was so odd because it had these mountains, so kind of symbolic of covenants, and then it also had what looks like dice, like the calendar dates on dice, this idea of March and casting lots. So that kind of weirded me out because I hadn't been doing the full research on that. I was doing it a little bit on my phone and just thinking about it, and I hadn't really gotten here. So anyways, <laughs> random randomness. So I think this is so important, and this has really been just a motivation for me that um, Doctrine and Covenants in 84 is a reminder, kind of a kick in the behind, condemnation, <laughs> all of Zion. But the prescription is we will be forgiven with this commandment to bear a testimony to all the world. So not only to not take it lightly and to read it and to do those things, but specifically, I will forgive you with this commandment that you, so solemn-minded, spirit of prayer, and bearing testimony to all the world. And in this day, we have the internet. So there are a million and one ways, a million social platforms. We have texting. We have really unending ways to share the Book of Mormon with people. So it's a time to reflect and think, how am I doing? How am I doing with that? So I know for me, I would say that when I realized this truth, it motivated me. And I thought, I don't want to be under condemnation. I need more blessings. And I I decided I needed to make some big changes. So I did. And let me kind of just share a little bit of my journey. So let me go to my blog. So. The first thing that I did to share the gospel was, um, here, I'll just read this part on my website. So I created this website called Christian Fire Poppy, firepoppy.org. I don't do that much on the website. So a lot of it is older posts because I'm pretty busy with the YouTube channel now. Um, but when I started, I had no idea what, was, what I was doing. I had no idea how to create a website. I had no idea. <laughs> Like what? No idea how to do this. So I got on and I had no idea what I was going to write about or say. I just thought I'm going to share my testimony with all the world. I'm going to just do my best. <laughs> and I felt really weird doing it, but I just felt like I wanted to be able to look God in the eye someday and say, I did. I got online. I did my best to share my testimony with all the world. So this is what I said about me. I'm a wife, a busy mother of five children and a follower of all things Jesus Christ. I like to have fun with my family go on cruises with my husband and take naps in my spare time. Give me a break. I'm exhausted. So why am I up at the crack of dawn starting a website right now? I'm trying to be obedient. <laughs> See, I'm kind of dragging my feet at this point. Like, okay, I'm going to do it. On Monday, November 28th, 2022, at one minute to midnight, I wrote this in my journal. I can't fall asleep. I'm recovering from surgery and I just finished watching my favorite YouTuber, Christian Homestead, where he was recording an admonition from President Nelson in 2018. My dear sisters, you have special spiritual gifts and propensities. Tonight, I urge you with all the hope of my heart to pray to understand your spiritual gifts, to cultivate, use, and expand them even more than you ever have. You will change the world as you do so. Tonight, I'm extending a prophetic plea to you. The women of the church. Sorry, I'm getting a little emotional because... This is such a potent, really life-changing moment for me to shape the future by helping to gather scattered Israel. And I had done this back then, but I felt moved to do it again. So I did. I prayed. And the thoughts that came to me were a fire poppy bloomed despite the doom and gloom. And this really spoke to me because I was kind of thinking, all right, I'm, I'll do it. I'll go online. I'll, I kind of thought, what would be the easiest the way to put myself out there the least, which was, I thought, a blog. I had done that in the past, and I could do that. Um, and But I thought, I have no idea what I'm doing. And so it was like, God got me started by just giving me a name and a topic, a symbol. And anyways, I thought that I often feel like a late bloomer, just a mom of five kids running around with my hair on fire as I attempt to do all the things. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Me time is rare. I'm very aware 
of the truth that we are approaching the day that shall burn as an oven. And I have to tell others that I know from personal revelation that I will experience the trials and wonders of the last days in my lifetime. And as I pondered how being a fire poppy might be important to following the fires and wonders of the last days, some really interesting thoughts came to me. I was thinking about the Mauna Loa um, eruption. And because of this awareness, I love to watch for signs of the second coming drawing closer in all things preparedness. If ye are prepared, ye shall not fear. Has been reiterated so many times in general conference. Let's prepare temporally and spiritually. He's coming. So when you start to focus on your problems or doom scroll, let's face it, all news is doom scrolling these days, or just feel worried at the state of the world, don't forget that God put you here for such a time as this. Now this, like rereading this just struck my heart so much because I had forgotten that I had written this. So as I'm coming back around full circle, tomorrow is the one year anniversary of when I started this channel exactly. So the last video I said it was my anniversary to the week. Now tomorrow will be to the exact day. And um, the Lord has really blessed me so much um, for putting myself out there and putting effort into this and doing something that at the time I felt like wasn't possible. But he says, he put you and I here at this time to bloom as fire poppies. One, sorry guys, I'm just, <laughs> I don't usually get this emotional in my videos, but I will admit when I'm bury my testimony at church. I am a crier. So one lone fire poppy isn't going to cut the erosion much. So let's gather together online and in person to do what we can. So I want to share one other thing with you guys. That is one of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to admit to you that I get a lot of anxiety from doing YouTube channels and from doing this YouTube channel. And one of the things that I do, oh, I can't pull it up, but one of the things that I do to kind of calm my nerves before I record a video is I listen to the song. It's called One, it's called So Will I 100 Billion X. And for you, maybe you could find something else that kind of soothes you and calms your fears before you share a Book of Mormon, before you share something online, before you do something that involves putting yourself out there in a vulnerable way. That's been very helpful to me. Okay. So as I was thinking about whether or not I should do a video on this, I felt I was kind of feeling like I had just done a video. I wanted to take a break um, or put it off. And I went to the school to volunteer and this is when like the spirit speaks to me in some kind of interesting ways sometimes. And I was there and I was reading with the little second graders and I took a picture of it because it seemed so unreal as I was thinking about 311 and 9-11, but the book that the teacher handed us to read was this. It was Watch Out for Thick Mud. And it started out, things were slow that day at Rainforest 911. So it was all about the story about this is Rainforest 911 and it says, Sasha needs help. She's in a pit. She's stuck in the mud. So it was a very short read about helping someone that's stuck in the mud. And it's kind of cool because that as I look back on my journey with this channel on 9-11 is my, um, so 9-11 and 3-11 moments on March 9th in 2023, I started my channel. And then on... Um, on 3-11, so on March 11th, just a couple days after I had kind of taken that leap, I had absolute best covenant day of my life. It was amazing. I was able to go to the temple and escort and take two very close friends to receive endowments at the same time. One of those friends I ministered to, and we had been friends for a long time. She was not active, and she decided that she was going to go. And it was such a joyous time. The other one was my neighbor. And that's just a covenant day that I will always remember. And it's pretty awesome that that was on 3-11 last year. So in James 5-20, it says, 
Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. And this is true because I have felt the blessings that have flowed now that I've decided to make more efforts to dedicate more of my time to sharing the gospel. And I found it kind of cool that I'm making this video and that these ideas just came to me. I haven't made any of these connections except for just starting yesterday. And right at this very moment, my channel reached 5.5 subscribers. Five is the biblical link to mercy. And this presentation, just by coincidence, ended up being 25 slides long. So five times five. And in one day, it'll be the exact anniversary day. And in three days, it will be 311. So I can testify to you that doing something that's really hard outside of your comfort zone, if it's you trying to follow the spirit and to share your testimony with the world, you will reap the blessings and you'll feel that lift because I have a multitude of sins that I need to cover. So, <laughs> so it's a blessing. And as that spirit starts to flow into your life, so I can testify that it has, I've experienced some of the greatest miracles that I have in my own life, specifically when within this last year since deciding to do some of these things. And it's almost like when the spirit comes into your life, it's like you feel a little bit like Neo from the Matrix. You kind of wake up from this superficial world of just doing what you want. And you realize that that's actually a very heavy way to live. and that turning to spiritual things and waking up, it can be difficult. It's hard, but it's very truthful and freeing. And I found it kind of interesting. So here's our, here's our little Neo analogy and weird <laughs> connection. <laughs> the matrix actually, um, actually means an environment or material in which something develops. So this earth that ran, we know that this earth is not our home. This earth is a place created for us to exercise our agency, to make choices, to grow in faith, and to see if we will do what the Lord commands us, including gathering Israel. So we're in this matrix of life. And this is kind of crazy. The matrix, it opened in theaters on March 31st, 1999. So before 9-11, if you look at Neo's passport, his passport expires on 9-11-2001, and his date of birth is March 11th. 311. So specifically, March 11th, 1962. And so you think, hmm, well, what year would Neo turn 62? That is 2024. So March 11th, 2024, Neo turns 62. So if this doesn't make you feel like we're living in God's matrix, I don't know what will. And I found this information at uh, Steve Fletcher 222. So he made all kinds of crazy connections about 311. So there are other people noticing interesting things I thought I'd share. But most importantly, like I said, even funny, weird, erroneous connections, it can help us remember the important concepts, which is to keep our covenants. So please join the goal to finish reading the Book of Mormon by April 8th or read the Book of Mormon every day until April 8th. And I want to add on, this is a short goal, but an important one. Let's share 3rd Nephi 11 on 311. Let's make 311 an amazing covenant day. So regardless of what happens in Israel, regardless of what crazy things happen, Ramadan is a time historically connected to violence and death and terrible things, terrible things. But let's do what we can as members of the church and be kings and queens unto others that have the knowledge and the covenants and the power of the priesthood to bless and to share our responsibility with all the people of the world. So let's make 311 a day of covenant blessings. Let's choose to be on the right hand of God and to share those blessings. So you have three days to pray about who to share with. So don't be like Jonah and just do it. And all you have to do is to share this link with a friend. So right here is the link to the Book of Mormon app. So it's different from the Gospel Library app. It's just a simple way for people to have the Book of Mormon on their phone. You can share it in a text. You can share it through Facebook Messenger, through any social media platform, but just do it. Just share it. Or if you want to give a hard copy, just pray about it and go where the Spirit tells you to go. 
Now, if you want to easily copy and paste this link, I started this Facebook group. So Jared at Christian Homestead started the Flood the Earth with the Book of Mormon Challenge. And this is actually the reason why I first ever contacted him was I was very inspired and I acted, acted upon his challenge. So it affected me and changed my life. And I thought, I, it really is so easy. And so I ended up sharing the Book of Mormon with so many people, everybody I could think of, really. And then once I had done that, I wanted to more. So I started this Facebook group and then I started my website and then eventually came to the channel. But flood, if you go to flood the earth with the Book of Mormon, you can see here, I said that this is a place for gathering and sharing resources and ideas to act now this day and help flood the world with the Book of Mormon as Elder Rasmund asked us to do this day. Our living prophet is doing his part to flood the earth with the Book of Mormon, but he cannot open the floodgates alone. We must follow his lead. When you hand them a Book of Mormon, you are opening their minds and hearts to the Word of God. You do not need to carry printed copies of the book with you. You can easily share it from your mobile phone, from the scriptures section of the Gospel Library app, or copy and paste this link. So if you go onto Facebook and join Flood the Earth with the Book of Mormon, you can just copy and paste this and send Facebook messages to people, maybe people that you haven't spoken to since high school, but you just send them and say, hey, I was just thinking about you and I wanted to share something that's special to me. I'm sorry I didn't share it sooner. All right. Well, thanks for joining me today at Christian Fire Poppy. Let's bloom despite the doom and gloom like a true fire poppy. So please share this video and encourage others to do this. We only have three days to make 311 a beautiful covenant day. Let's spread the fire poppy mentality and share the gospel because the Zion field of many fire poppies will reduce erosion after fires. Join us for more fiery passion and preparedness as we fly into the second coming of Jesus Christ.